I have my lighthouse sweater on, I have a cozy candle lit, I am ready to tell you about five books that you should read during the winter time. Hello everyone, my name is Olivia and today I wanted to recommend you five books that are perfect to read around winter time. They all have this melancholic, very quiet atmosphere and some are actually set during winter. So these are five books that I would highly recommend that you pick up during a snowy winter day and you curl up under a blanket and read because they are just perfect reads for around this time of year. Here I have one translated fiction, one trilogy that you can read because it is set during the winter time. I have two historical fictions and one horror slash thriller novel for you to read. So let's start with the translated fiction. The first book that I have to show you is The Forest of Wool and Steel by Natsu Miyashida. This was translated from Japanese by Philip Gabriel. This follows our main character Tamura who lives in Japan and he wants to become a piano tuner. So he embarks on training in order to become one and this basically chronicles his experience tuning people's pianos and learning the skill to work with pianos and make them sound as good as possible. It delves deep into the power of music and it's just a very quiet novel that doesn't necessarily have a plot. We simply follow Tamura as he is learning more about the piano industry, as he is learning more about piano tuning in general, and the discussions that he has with different musicians as he is working on their pianos and he's working alongside his trainer. It's just a very beautiful novel. The writing is stunning and I just think that it's such a wonderful quick read to pick up and if you're looking for something atmospheric, if you're looking for something that will transform you into another time and place, I would highly recommend this because it's just a very soft type of story. It's simply about the love for pianos and the love and time it takes to create one and care for one. The next book that I have to recommend deals a lot with the winter time and it is the Bear and the Nightingale trilogy or I think it's called the Winter Night trilogy actually. I I only have the first two books in the trilogy because I don't have the third one yet, but the first one is The Bear and the Nightingale, the next one is The Girl in the Tower, and I believe the third one is called The Winter of the Witch. So The Bear and the Nightingale trilogy is probably one of my favorite trilogies of all time. I listened to it entirely on audiobook and I thought it was absolutely fantastic, very immersive, very atmospheric, and I just thought it was so completely unique. So it follows our main character Vasilisa who lives in the Russian wilderness with her father and her siblings. Her mother died when she was very young and her father is now remarrying this woman who is trying to change the entire atmosphere of their household. Vasilisa is a very spiritual person and she talks to the different spirits in her house and in her village, but this new stepmother decides to forbid all of that and that greatly affects the entire village as a whole. So it says, as the village's defenses weaken and evil from the forest creeps nearer, Vasilisa must call upon dangerous gifts she has concealed to protect her family from a threat sprung to life from her nurse's most frightening tales. So this novel also deals with the Russian version of Jack Frost who is called Morosko. Morosko is such a wonderful character along with Vasilisa. She's just a very warm-hearted open person who's also a bit gruff on the outside and Morosko is just a very cold type of villainous character who has a very important part in this whole entire story. It's just a very magical series that I'm sure draws a lot from Russian folk tales and it is just so wonderful and also addictive to read because they are generally short so I feel like you can read them or listen to them fairly quickly. This is a trilogy that I loved more and more as each book went on. It deals with politics, religion, spirits, the belief in spirits and protecting them. So if you are looking for a wintry type of fantasy novel to dive into, I would highly recommend this trilogy because they are very quick to read, they are amazing, and I just loved all the characters and I loved the character development as well. I never Never recommend fantasy series because I'm really not a fantasy person and I'm pretty sure this was like the last fantasy trilogy that I actually completed so when I say this is good I do mean it's good and it's very rare for me to recommend fantasy so just a heads up. Now let's move on to two historical fictions set during the winter time and their atmosphere definitely plays a role in the entire story in general. So the first historical fiction that I have to recommend deals a lot with the wintry atmosphere and it plays a very big role in the story and it is Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Sepetys. 
This takes place in Lithuania during 1941. Our main character is 15 and her name is Lina. So Lina is living a fairly normal life when the Soviet secret police invade her home, take her mother, take her brother, and take her to a camp in Siberia. So they are separated from Lina's father and she will do anything that she can while in this camp in order to contact her father to let him know that they are okay. There is a quote at the top of it that actually like sent shivers down my spine and it said, have you ever wondered what a human human life is worth. That morning, my brother's was worth a pocket watch. This book is probably one of the most devastating historical fictions that I have ever read. It completely opened my eyes to the atrocities that Lithuanians faced along with people who were sent to prisons in Siberia, which is a very harsh environment and they are not given protection and they just have to survive off of pure will in this very snowy, freezing atmosphere. So Ruta Zapetis is Lithuanian, so she took stories from different people that she interviewed and kind of created this historical fiction centered around all those stories that she heard. This is a very underrated historical fiction. I do know that Ruta Sepetis is a best-selling author, but when I hear about YA historical fiction, which I don't hear a lot about, I never hear about Between Shades of Grey. I just want more people to read Between Shades of Grey and Salt to the Sea because those two books completely opened my eyes to different parts of history that I did not know about previously. I do want to reread it, but I don't know if I'm emotionally strong enough to reread it because I've only read it once and I feel like that still lives in my heart. You have to read it. Another historical fiction that takes place in an environment that plays a very big role in the story is Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. I have heard about this book for so many years across booktube and I have always wanted to read it and I finally read it I think last year and it was so devastating. Definitely not as devastating as Between Shades of Grey, but this one completely took my breath away when I finished it because I was just so tensed and I was just holding in my breath and when I finished it I just like exhaled and was like Wow. Burial Rites takes place in Iceland following our main character Agnes who is charged for the murder of two men and she is sent to an isolated farm in northern Iceland to await execution. But before her execution, Agnes asks for the help of a priest in order to assist her during this waiting period before she is executed. So we follow Agnes as she stays on this farm with a family who she does not know and they are forced to take care of her before her death day and then we also follow the priest who was called upon to help Agnes when he doesn't actually know her. And then we also follow Agnes as she is awaiting this death day and she is really in her thoughts and it's very introspective and she is thinking about the murder that actually happened. She's thinking about her mortality and she's also dealing with this family that she's currently living with who don't trust her and see her just as a criminal and they don't really see her as a person. So this is just a very complex historical fiction in terms of different topics that it touches upon. It touches upon mortality, religion, criminality, and the justice system in Iceland. And it was such an eye-opening read because I have never read any stories set in Iceland. And the atmosphere that Hannah Kent crafts is so vivid. You feel like you're there. You feel like you're in this very cold farm with these strangers amongst Agnes as she is waiting for the days to pass before she dies. I just greatly love this story because we follow so many different perspectives and we follow so many different opinions because the farmers have one opinion about Agnes, the priest has another opinion about her and he's trying to understand her and see her as a person, and then we follow Agnes as she is recounting what happened during this crime and it was just wild. And the last thing that I have to recommend is a horror slash thriller that I actually read last winter and greatly enjoyed and I've spoken about a couple of times in recent videos but I want to mention it here because it's too perfect not to include even though I'm always mentioning it everywhere and it is Moon of the Crested Snow by Wabgishig Rice. So we follow the Anishinaabe community in the northern part of North America and their lives are completely changed one day when the power goes out in the middle of winter. The Anishinaabe community lives in a very harsh environment in North America so when the power goes out they are scrambling to figure out how they are going to survive this winter without heat with 
without a ability to call someone for supplies and without having help from outside the community. So we follow our main character who is one of the leaders in the Anishinaabe community and we follow him as he's trying to take care of his family. He's trying to set regulations for this entire community but it's very difficult to do so because some people may want more and they may take more than they are allowed to so when all these rations are put in place tension begins to rise when one day during all of this chaos someone shows up at the community and it is an outsider and when that outsider shows up everything has changed forever. It's just a very quick read and it also deals with the hierarchy in society, it deals with colonialism, it deals with this community that is trying to stay close-knit but is slowly falling apart at the seams once this outsider comes in. It is so well written. I thought it was such an entertaining read and it is perfect for the winter time if you're looking for something a little bit more spooky, if you want something that's going to leave you on the edge of your seat during a snowy winter night. I think this is such a good book for that. Those are five books that I would highly recommend that you pick up during the winter time. We have a very cozy read, we have very serious reads, we have a fun trilogy that you can dive into, and then we have a very spooky read at the end. So let me know if you have any books that are set during the winter time that you would highly recommend. Let me know about your winter TBR. I would love to hear about that down below. And if you want to connect with me anywhere else, all my social media links will be down below. If you want to follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Goodreads, all of that will be down below in the description. If you have made it this far in the video, comment down a snowflake emoji to see who stays for the longest in all my videos. And if you do, thank you so much. I really do appreciate you and I will see you around in another video. Stay cozy. Bye.